Lynch. Tom Ayer. Harry Armstrong. Larry Patrick. Sure. Shannon Hand. That again? Shannon Hiss. Shannon. Hi. I think the other person was Sheriff Boniak. Is that you, Sheriff Boniak? Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay. And we had Kevin Taylor. We have Kevin Taylor and we have Wayne Warner who just, just uh, spoke. Is everybody on the phone? Uh, Cliff Rankin. We also have Melissa. Melissa. Melissa Bob Presti. Yep. Our health and deputy health officers. Okay. Hey, and uh, Adolfo, for those of us on the phone, can we get uh, that are at offices and first? Sorry, Trina, what was that? It broke out a little. Can you tell us who's there in the town offices? Uh, yes, here uh, is me representing the select board, and we have a member from Orca Media. Wayne Fisher. Wayne Fisher. Is Dave Crosby in on this? Uh, Dave from the Herald was notified, but uh, he has not identified himself and may not be on the call. Okay. Thanks. Hey, first up is public comment. This is anything that's not on the agenda for tonight. Hearing none, uh, move on to approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Barry? Uh, I'm fine. Okay, I got that. Thanks. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next up is new business, and the first item is the town response to COVID. If I could just share with the board, uh, we have several members of town staff that are involved with various groups in town, uh, both uh, directly and indirectly collecting information, disseminating information, uh, we have members of uh, the board that are working with groups that are circulating resources that uh, may be necessary or needed in the community. Um, so we, we're, we're doing what we can given the, the unusual circumstances that we're presented with. Uh, we are for the most part at 100% staffing, so our, our staff continue to operate. Um, some are working from home. Our highway crews have kept the roads uh, open as best they can given the recent storm, but everyone's still on the job. Great. Are we having any uh, challenges getting anything that the town needs at this time? Not, not the town necessarily. Um, we have heard from the sheriff's department, uh, we have heard from our first responders about a need for personal protection equipment. Um, the same challenges that are being faced by medical professionals and public uh, safety officials nationwide. Um, we did circulate a request from, from the state to our first responders asking if they need any PPEs uh, we have received a response from nearly everyone, and we will be submitting that request. Uh, we know that some of our fire departments have already secured some protective uh, personal equipment from local companies. So we, from what I was shared earlier today with one of our chiefs, is that we have sufficient to last us for at least uh, a month or two, maybe three. 
Uh, but otherwise, we're still working to have as uh, as much uh, PPE equipment as needed, and we're, we're working with the sheriff's department to get them what they need. Can we um, translate for the fire department what equipment what they're covered for in terms of call numbers versus a month or two months? Only thinking that you know the volume of calls that they might see ebbs and flows. Yeah, I have not spoken to them about call volume, mostly just um, information on uh, expected length of time, but I could coordinate with them. I can answer that. Yep. Um, so can you just what identify we your... Sure, this is Mike, Michael Hildenbrand with the Randolph Village Fire Department. Oh, there's a new name. You didn't identify yourself. <laughs> you guys were already talking, so... <laughs> Um, so what we did, what I did for the village is I estimated our average number of calls um, and with the modification of our response to limiting the number of people who are coming in close contact with the public, I then times that out by the number of masks, gloves, and uh, other uh, disposable items that we would have. And we're looking at uh, deconning safety glasses so we have eye protection but we do have enough masks to, to last us. Uh, to, if we hit an average number of calls, which is 10 per month, um, about two months time. If we are less than that, it'll be three months. If it's more than that, we'll be closer to a month. Um, we also have the opportunity um, with the mobile hospital and the fire station to grab some additional items and, and working with the Vermont Division of, of uh, Emergency Management to uh, um, restock those items as we use them. When you, uh, so some of the, have you talked with the health department about the, the risk benefit of the mass? Not specifically, uh, but I told them what I was doing and they did not uh, object. Okay. Evan Taylor, any idea where East Randolph stands? Uh, yes, we have uh, been able to gather up a uh, reasonable amount of equipment from area vendors and donations. Um, I don't I don't have it all worked out as well as Mike does, but uh, we have enough to cover, I would say, a month or so worth of our average calls. We don't get too many calls anyway, but... The three stations got together to talk about it because as people get more sick and what have you, we're going to have to adjust our response, be it mutual aid or, you know, other kinds of things. So uh, I think we're trying, we're doing our best to stay ahead of it. Okay, thanks. Um, Sheriff Boniak, we see a request to change uh, call to change coverage because of call rates, and this is one of the pieces that was predicted when the uh, quarantine started coming down. You know, we kind of probably not joke. We did we joked about it that you know what we were going to see is a baby boom in December, but the alternative to that is we're going to see a higher percentage of domestic violence and things going on. I had uh, seen the request to increase patrols. I looked at that, and the FEMA money that's coming out, uh, that guidance just came out on, is going to cover those costs if they can be uh, tracked separately to be a uh, direct result of quarantines and the COVID. So I'm not sure if you're, are you seeing, are you seeing a higher demand for services at this time? Uh, yes, we are. We're seeing the, uh, an increase in family disturbances. Uh, every, it's been mainly um, 15, 16 year olds fighting with parents. You know, they want to continue their regular routine where parents are trying to, you know, keep their kids home. And 
you know, we did have one domestic, which police led to an arrest just the other night uh, in a village. So we are seeing an uptick. And what we were talking about, uh, what I mentioned to Adolfo was uh, basically from 11, roughly 11 o'clock in the morning till 9 at night, having a, possibly a second person on uh, just in the village. Uh, you know, we, we did call the state police for backup the other night. Uh, when we made the arrest, um, you know, we are using social distancing for, um, you know, we're asking people to, you know, step out of the house sometimes wherever possible. Um, we are in need of the N95 mask, and the main reason we need those is for if we have to transport somebody in a vehicle, because then we can find space. So um, that's our need for, you know, I don't need many masks. I don't, hopefully, we won't see too many people. Um, are going to go to jail. But, uh, right now, the courts, so everyone knows, the courts are basically uh, emergency hearings only. So uh, our transports are basically, uh, the routine transports we normally do have stopped. And like I said, it's only going to be for emergencies. Uh, that's what I have so far. I think we need to, I don't know if anybody else has thoughts on this, but I think we need to err on the side of having coverage and public safety being the key, because I don't think this is going to get any better. Uh, and the, you know, I think we can tie this directly to quarantines and now the governor's announcement that came out just as we were coming on this call is calling for basically anybody that's not essential to with their activities outside the home. So I think your job is going to get a little bit more dynamic, unfortunately. Um, and right. given that it's going to be an expense that is going to be coming under the criteria for covered costs, um, I, I just am not sure, not sure what the risk is of that, you know, I, so at some point, can't imagine every cost that we can come up with is going to be covered. But right, and I am keeping. So uh, I've been spending the majority of my days. Uh, I'll be honest. I've, been, I've never been on so many conference calls from you know not just the local but statewide, um, and even on a national level. You know, we're um, it's this is ever it's this is changing so rapidly. You know, just in a few days, we went from uh, uh, a few people infected. Now we're up to 95. I got, and I have one person who we're waiting to hear. So I may, I may be losing one deputy. We're waiting to hear if um, his wife was exposed by a doctor. So uh, over in Dartmouth. So we are <laughs> waiting to hear if uh, she's positive or not. And we may go under 14-day quarantine. So it's, okay. it's everybody, you know, we just need to be, you know, that social distancing, that's a, that's the biggest thing right now, you know, and the basic hygiene stuff. Uh, we all need to just work together and put our heads together. Uh, and, you know, we could play this by, you know, if it, if it gets worse, then I can see, you know, saying yes to, to, the, to the select board members and Adolfo, yes, it's time to put that second person in place. So we're, uh, the request that you had, Sheriff, is that for the town, you were looking for the town to approve a, an additional officer during the day? It was uh, roughly, what we're looking at the uh, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., and it would be uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Those seem to be our highest call volume days. Can you just put together what it is that you would like and um, just a rough cost on that and submit it up to Adolfo and then we can send it out to the board and we can um, Absolutely. evaluate. 
so we know kind of what we're getting into. Right. Um, it's also on the highway staff, we still have everybody on the crew. We have everyone except one person, uh, and they uh, chose to accept a, they were already on a one week vacation, asked if they could extend to an additional week because of just uh, issues uh, um, that were occurring and just concerns that they had. Uh, we had allowed staff that if they wanted to use vacation for precautionary measures that they could, so they, they agree to do that and we we waive that part of the personnel policy other other than that one person everyone else is on board uh, uh, still on the job and, and looking at the roads I would say they did just fine <laughs> yeah and water wastewater water and wastewater everyone is still on the job we had one person out last week uh unrelated to um it was due to it was due to an illness but it was more of a stomach born illness and not any of the symptoms that that has been reported so uh, we're still at 100 percent right um anybody have any other parts of town operations that they have concerns with This is Pat. I have a question for Bill Bonyak. Bill, do you say that uh, what you're talking about could be in the future? You're not seeing that as an issue yet, having the second person on? We just recently, in the past week, noticed the increase in calls. Uh, that's why uh, with my with my supervisors, we discussed this and figured bring it to your attention now, then, then wait. So, uh, like I said, we could, you know, keep an eye on this, and if it, if it starts getting overwhelming, then let's put it in place. Yeah, that's what I thought you meant. Thank you. Any other questions? So the other item under this that we have is the board uh, passed a motion to waive uh, penalties and fees on taxes that weren't paid by the March 31st deadline, allowing people an additional three months, um, which would get them to the June 30th date, pay them without incurring penalties and fees. Um, <laughs> Then it came out that we needed to also uh, waive the you know, liens um, on property. So um, Adolfo and Cliff dug into it, uh, working with Joyce to figure out how to make all this work. So what you received is a, a sample motion that not only waives penalties and interest, but keeps liens from being filed against the properties that don't pay by March 31st. And it also clarifies that uh, what we will pay to the school district is only those, those values that we've collected. Uh, so the statute says that the town will pay the school within 20 days the taxes that have been collected for the school and by either 120 days or the end of the fiscal year we'll pay the balance whether it's collected or not in the past randolph's practice has been just to issue the check within the 20 days for the entire amount due because the majority of our taxes were collected at that point um, but making a change in giving folks this extra three months is going to put an impact on the amount that's collected um, so to keep us from absorbing the hit of paying all of the school payment at once 
we need to just clarify that we're only paying the school the portion that's collected. And there have been conversations with the school about this too, so it's not coming as a surprise to them. Any thoughts on that? Uh, I just have a question about, um, this is Tom, um, the clause or the, the, the sentence that talks about with the remaining balance to be paid within 120 days from the due date. So that gives them an, that gives us an additional 30 days beyond the 90 day extension. Is that, uh, am I reading that correctly? So that's a state statute that the oh, town has right. to pay a balance due within 120 days to the school, whether we've collected it or not. I see. I have a question, Trini. It's Pat. Yep. Um, it looks like we've changed the intent a little bit because I thought the original intent was to just delay penalties and interest on fiscal year 2020 taxes. And the way I read it here it says um, interest and penalties that accrue on unpaid property taxes, including accounts that are currently delinquent. I didn't think the intent was to um, waive the interest on previous years. I think that language change was made, Pat, after you brought it to our attention that the software that calculates this doesn't differentiate between the two. Well, it so the problem is payments that payments for 2020, but you, I think you can still do it. You, you don't have to um, forego the interest on previous ones, say, if somebody owes money from a year or two ago, they've already been charged the penalty and they get interest added every month. So it seems to me like this should be targeted towards fiscal year 2020 unpaid property taxes, which would mean both payments for 2020, but it wouldn't apply to previous years if they still owed from previous years. Thought that's what we were talking about. Yep. Where would you like to make the language change? Well, I would say uh, move the delay for a period of three months from the date of March 31st, 2020. All interests and penalties that accrue on unpaid fiscal year 2020 property taxes, and then delete including accounts that are currently delinquent. I thought that was in our as our intent to, to do it for mm -hmm. both payments in 2003, but not the previous year. Did other Everybody people? good with the change that Pat wants? I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it too. That was my understanding as well. Uh, that's correct. Any other changes? There is, uh, if I if I could add one change, uh, just in double checking our citations, um, on sentence in the second paragraph, sentence four at the end, that uh, leads into sentence five. It cites thirty two VSA one thirty three. Uh, the change would be thirty two VSA. Four seven nine three. So, uh, thirty two VSA one thirty three is the chapter, forty seven is within that chapter. Yeah, that's right. But the, the citation thirty two VSA one thirty three leads us to something about a, a very random. So, if if yeah, 32 VSA 133 cites a different section that talks about something else. Uh, but you are correct, Trini. It is 32 VSA Chapter 133, 
but the citation of it, 32 VSA 133 leads to something unrelated to, to this entirely. So if we were specific and said 32 VSA 4793, it talks about the specific subsection that is related to this particular item. Or if we just added the word chapter. Um, that would work. It wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be the exact citation. It would just say 32 VSA chapter 133. And then it would apply for the entire chapter. If you cite a law and you do 32, that's your title via of Vermont statutes annotated. 133 would be your your first section. Would be so it's probably in chapter one. And what we're saying is the part we want, the part that deals with all this, is chapter 133. That that has right. all the laws within there is is little subsections that deal with you know the definition of stuff and. notification, all that. And what it's also saying is within that, we either need to add chapters to it, so it is the entire chapter dealing with this that we're addressing, or we need to add the actual subsection in there, which is 4793. So could we, could we simply say VSA 133, subsection 4793? Uh, you have to define it as the chapter before 133. Okay. Either we remove 133 and put 4793, or we add the word chapter after VSA. Trini, this is Adolfo. It doesn't sound like there's a, uh, a preference uh, with anyone in the board. So if, if you prefer, we can just do 32 VSA chapter 133. I, I'm fine with that. Uh, well, when you pull it up on the internet, so if you pull it up and you look at the book, you look in there, chapter 133 takes you to all those other sub subsections. So I think I would be fine with just saying chapter 133. Yeah, and 4793 is actually the warrant that gets drawn up. And this is where we get into the kind of the, you know, where is the lien authorization? My preference is to go with the whole chapter, so we've covered it. Yeah. That's fine with me. Fine with me. Okay. Yep. Could I okay. Any other comments on the motion? This is Pat. I have one other. I would like to yep. add in the previous motion we had, we encouraged those Randolph taxpayers who are able to pay their taxes or a portion of their taxes on time to do so, as that helps the town as a whole to help others needing that at this time. I'd like to add that at the end because I think it's important that we let people know that don't wait 30 days to pay. Uh, if you can, pay now. wondered what other people think. I'm fine, I'm fine with that. With that. Motion. I, yeah. We've done a good job messaging that. Thanks, Larry. Um, well, I put that in, in as part of a um, proposed language for that front porch forum post, but I did not actually include that after Joyce's comments, but I can. 
I think it's important to message that. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Well, after, after, for tomorrow's post, I'm going to um, include the language about the, the lien not, you know, also being included in our motion. And, um, and when I do that, I'll, I'll include this additional um, message. Sounds good. Yep. More comments? Should we move the uh, motion then as amended? Was that a motion, Tom? I, I, I was asking if that was the next step, if there were no further comments. I, I, that is the next step. For the comments, I'll make the motion that we move the uh, we move the motion as, or the resolution as amended. Second, have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I missed two. This is Shannon. I missed who seconded that. Pat. It was Pat. 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 Okay, next up is the uh, hey, tax Trini, anticipation note. Trini, just before we go, just just wanted to confirm that there were there were a lot of eyes, some overlap, but uh, I wrote down five yeses. Um, is that it sounds accurate? Just wanted to confirm. Okay. I heard five. Yep, perfect. Thank yeah. you. And Adolfo, may I interrupt? This is Melissa, the town health officer. Bob and I are here to answer any health-related questions. Um, are we done with the health portion of the program? We are. Does anybody have any questions or concerns for us? No, just good luck. Okay. Um, we're available, and I know that everybody has our numbers. If need be, we're very happy to help in any way. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Thank, Thank you, Bob. I'm welcome. You're welcome. Bye bye. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Thank you. Bye. Unless you've got something else for me, Adolfo, I'm going to sign off. This is Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Wayne. Take care, You're Wayne. welcome. Actually, for any of the firemen that are on, we're just going to talk about a tax anticipation note and then other business, old business, which I don't think we have anything under. So, um, Next up is the tax anticipation note. This is to authorize Joyce to go out and seek rates uh, and get a note in place in case we need it for day-to-day -day operations. We uh, are hoping that the board would uh, make a motion to authorize staff to, to seek a tax anticipation note. So usually with these, uh, it, it requires a, a board vote, and then there's like a resolution that we have to vote in after you select who you're going to have the note with. I think all we can do tonight is authorize you to go out and get rates and who's interested, and then most of them have a very specific resolution that we have to adopt. That is correct, Trini. Uh, we, we did plan, uh, if the board authorized us today to seek out a TAN, to bring all necessary paperwork uh, to the April select board meeting. Questions or comments on that? Do you know what the amount will be? Uh, I don't, but we have the opportunity, I believe, uh, through the voters at town meeting to seek up to the total amount that we could, um, that we are anticipating through tax. Uh, I don't expect for us to, to seek that high of a tax anticipation note. Typically, it's in the vicinity of, of, of uh, $1 million, but even then, uh, we only draw from it if necessary. Um, but we don't have an amount yet. Um, 
that's something I, I, I would uh, speak with Cliff and Joyce about when we when we seek the rates and what's out there. So essentially, this is like the credit line, and you don't even know how much of it you might need. Uh, yeah, for the most part, it is. It's it's if we need we need to draw money for instances where we don't think people are going to pay taxes or something in this scenario. Right. Uh, it is it is almost like a line of credit, but not exactly a line of credit. Right, not exactly. But so you you'd have a better picture of this probably come first couple days of April, right? Uh, probably sooner than that. I think by the end of this, within the next few days, we're going to know if people continue to pay their taxes or not. If, you know, for all we know, everyone decides to pay and then we may not need a TAN or we don't have anyone paying from this point going forward. And then we, you know, we're, we're left with a potential deficit. So we'll know within the next few days how much we will need for a TAN. I think it's reasonable for you to go out to the bank for a line up to a million dollars and then we can uh, it can be narrowed in if need be but again it's you know you can have a million dollars and not borrow against it at all yeah correct okay. all right so i make a motion that we uh, authorize adolfo to work with joyce to proceed with tax efficiency a tax anticipation note to discuss to determine what the rates might be. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's a five zip, Adolfo. Thank you. Uh, any old business? No old business, no. Other business? None. No executive session? No executive it's session. A little hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next motion? <laughs> Move to admit, uh, make a motion and we adjourn. I think Pat beat you. All right, I'll second it then. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are done. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.